Terry from Heavy Hitch has joined us now. Terry, uh, we found something here pretty destructive, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear about and it. And Ken is, of course, still with us. He's hidden behind this thing, right? <laughs> Can you actually see? <laughs> This is something that looks destructive to me, Ken. It looks very destructive, yes. Yeah, and yet it's supposed to fit a small tractor. I don't um, think it'll fit a subcompact. So we right? just got the specs. The, um, they recommend a uh, 16 to 30 horsepower, but a minimum tractor weight of 1,800 pounds, so it doesn't tip the tractor. Now, sure, we could offset, the, we could add some weights or something, but that's what their specs recommend. Um, it weighs just under 700 pounds total. Okay. Um, the cutting, the length, the cutting width is 31 and 31 and a half inches. The, the they measure from the center of the unit where the PTO right. would be. It'll the end of the cutting head would be 10 feet out. Would okay. Be max reach. How about height? Um, I did not get that spec. Okay. If you did, I don't remember it. <laughs> he threw a lot of numbers but at me. Probably quickly. about ten, <laughs> probably about ten feet as well, because it, it, yeah, it we would have go in a radius here. Four or five feet here, four or five feet there. What we see here is a joystick. The, the first of all, the hydraulics are all contained in this unit. Yes, it's not depending on any of the tractor hydraulics. Nothing at all. It's driven by a PTO hydraulic pump. Right. And this is the actual reservoir right in there. Um, and this joystick then allows us to control the unit. So they they don't. They just don't require anything on the tractor other than the three-point hitch and the PTO. This is cable driven with the cables here. Yep. So you can actually mount this um, on your operator station right next to you. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult because it is cable driven. I noticed that it, it pulls or pushes a little bit hard. Yeah, well, it, they're wound up here pretty tight too. So You can't do multiple movements at the same time. You can only go in one direction at a time. But there are several different movements. Check out this spring here, Ken. If right. we have so to hit a, something. Yeah, if you hit something, that's a breakaway knuckle there, so to, yeah. to save itself. Yeah, pretty heavy duty spring for sure. Now, I think this thing would be incredibly useful, but Terry, I'm gonna have to have a loan from you to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I got any left. <laughs> okay, guys, make a guess. Oh, you may already know. Make a guess. What I know, I won't say. <laughs> what do you think that what do you think this thing would sell for? Ten? That's what we thought too. Eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Pretty so high price it's point. It's gonna be steep. I, th I'm, yeah. I think this is uh, this is still in just the dream world for, for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's um, <laughs> it's as much as yeah, the tractor. Yeah, it's beautifully is. designed with the electric, uh, you know, the cooler and the electric fan, and it's, it's designed in Italy and built in Italy, yeah. Bologna, Italy. Actually, we went to Bologna last year. That's where Catrillo was in school. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's it's just kind of neat to see Very something. Very high quality. All banjo fittings on all the cylinders. Instead of you know NPT or any you know or, or the better at JIC or ORB, but so it's expensive, but it's a quality product. Yeah. If you have a need for something like this, it's a flail mower at the end. I'm sure it'll take about one inch at one the inch very is the max. capacity. He did tell me that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it has the hammers on the end. So interesting product. So check out. Look at all these hoses. Yeah, wide range of hoses. Uh, whether it's regular hydraulic hose thermoplastic hose, PTFE hose with a steel braid. We do it all in-house, custom cut, crimped, and shipped hoses straight to your door. So Tim, unfortunately, I would not Wrong recommend that fit. end to go on there because that is designed for your Parker or Gates machine, and you would want to use a three series fitting on that hose. How am I supposed to know that? Um, well, we do have a great website with a lot of information on it, but you're always welcome to give us a call and talk to a friendly guy like me to help get you figured out uh, we take the dealer intimidation out of the equation and we're happy to give information. Even if you never buy anything else from us, we're happy to get you figured out. Really? Oh yeah. So I can call you just to chat? I do it all the time. I'm having some <laughs> marital issues. Hey! <sighs> um, I happen to know your wife and I think she's a real sweetheart. So, uh, you know, that's between you and her and the Lord, sir. <laughs> so these, boy, that's a small one. That's quarter inch, right? Uh, no, that would actually be an eighth inch, I believe. This is eighth inch? Well, you know, let's check it out because, you know, I do it a lot and it's been a couple of days. So okay. what we'd always recommend is you want to take a set of digital calipers. We sell them online, but if you see us at a farm show, we give plenty of these away. Uh, the best book on the table, and I'm happy to send one out. We sell them on the website, but I would rather give one to everyone that walks in this door because it makes my job easier. Yeah. Uh, this is a thread ID guide. Yeah. 
no matter whose machine we go to, Case, Mahindra, it's that Deere, I can't use these, I don't know, these guys with these green tractors, doesn't matter, everybody uses standardized threads. Okay. Um, depending on the manufacturer, I can help you figure it out, but this will take all the mystery out, it has line drawings, you look at what you have, you find it in the book, and then you go. So the one you picked up had to be pipe thread. So you take a set of calipers. Uh, digital ones are easier, but you can use your old micrometers. Your grandfather gave to his machine shop. Doesn't matter. Zero it out. Measure the OD on pipe thread. We recommend the third thread down. So we're going to go down to here. I got 0.54 on the micrometer. 0.54 male thread OD in this column. We can link to it or something. I don't know. You're, you're the tech wizard. I'm just a hose guy. Uh, 0.54 is quarter inch. So Tim, you actually win, I don't know what, you win a fantastic discount hydraulic hose pen. It's the second best pen in the entire National Farm Machinery Show. So it I is quarter challenge inch. you to bring back the second. Quarter yes, inch that's quarter inch MPT. Now, how do I know at a glance that it's MPT? So it stands for National Pipe Tapered Fuel. A lot of guys think that's female. I it was just natural, national pipe thread female. That's yeah. what I thought it was. I mean, everybody has their own, but uh, there it's you tapered. go. So you're going to see it's tapered, comes down a little. Um, often confused with British Standard Pipe Parallel, which is a parallel thread. It's going to be unique. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the newer import tractors and a lot of the import cylinders are all threaded British Standard Pipe Parallel. So we're seeing a lot of that. We sell a wide range of adapters of British Standard Pipe Parallel and metric. Even your boys over at Deere are using a lot of metric now. Okay. So, but if I use this chart, and this set of calipers. I mean, this is exact enough that I can, that oh, yeah. I can typically figure. Definitely, this is the most useful thing. I have four or five copies on my desk. We have a PDF online you can download and print out. Uh, this is the book that helps me solve problems every day, and your so, problems are my. Problems. What if I'm still confused? Like the the other day, I had, I just couldn't tell. I thought it was one thread. I called you. Yeah. What's the next step? I'm just, I'm not sure. So, uh, we do sell thread checkers. Uh -huh. I don't have any because we sell out of those real quick at the farm show. Uh, you can use those. They're plastic thread gauges, TGK1 and TGK2. They'll do all your British standard and metric, and then the other set will do all the North American stuff we're all familiar with. Um, a lot of times, nothing more than a text message picture directly to us, and then we call you. We'll call you back because, you know, we're busy. Um, then we'll figure it out. And yeah, we'll I mean, that's what happened. Success, I just right? sent a text message, and I had my calipers on there. And you oh, said that was easy. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys will call us up all the time and say, oh, you've never seen a thread like this. <laughs> and every six months I get a guy, I've never seen it, you know, but it really is all standardized. It's not, there's no such thing as standard thread. A guy will call up and say, I got a standard hose. Well, what does that mean? Right. So, so this is JIC flare? That is JIC. A lot of guys are called AN in the racing world. It's at a 37 degree flare. It's one of our most commonly found fittings in the entire hydraulic industry because you can adapt to it. Um, you know, here's a 90 to get onto it. We have them in 45s. You could have elbows that get you back out the pipe and you'll see a lot of manufacturers will just put JIC at the end and then at the machine have a little um, angled adapter. And we mm -hmm. have thousands and thousands of SKUs and overloading stock boxes. We haven't had the- But that's taper on that end, so that's probably that pipe. pipe. Exactly. And you start Are there any the, others that are tapered? Uh, That's not tapered. Not that I can think of. Most of them are straight so thread. So if we see taper, it's going to be pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's another common one. That's ORB. Yes, O-ring boss. Uh, some call it SAE ORB, and you'll see it doesn't have a taper. That's a straight thread. So I'm confused on the ORB, SAE ORB. How do I know there's a dash number on it? So uh, the dash number is a fraction. So uh, get your second grader out and it'll help you figure this one out. You see a dash 04, 4 over 16 reduces to 1 quarter. Uh, 8 over 16, half. Uh, 20 over 16, inch and a quarter. And it's all okay. in that thread guide, I promise. So if I look at my thread, gui thread guide and I find SAE, ORB, and Eight I'll measure six. with my calipers. Oh yeah. Uh, what does this yours one, read? This one's, I bet, just because I know what I put on the table, this <laughs> one's going to measure uh, 0.75. Okay, 0.75. That's Dash 08. Dash 08. <laughs> Ken acted go. like he already knew. I already knew what Ken, Ken's at. a handy yeah. guy. I don't know if we've been to Ken's bolt-on hooks ever. I think they're a new startup or something. But uh, Sorry I'm honing in on your... Uh, uh, we, we love it, coming to the farm like. machinery show and meeting the people that we deal with over the phone and get to email back and forth yes. and really sit down and have dinner and have a good time. Yeah. Hoses and fittings, is that all you do? No. No, actually. Uh, we do sell 
crimp machines. Uh, I'd rather custom cut crimp chip your hose, but if you wanted to get into making your own hoses, of course we sell. That's big money, guys. I mean, it's a big yeah. commitment. Uh, realistically, your startup to get a machine with five dies, which is about what most guys want, you're looking at about three thousand dollars. And for and most man, guys, you've got to get a set of fittings, yeah, right? Yeah, and so that's before you're buying hose and fittings, and even at our prices, it's still an investment. Yes. Uh, we sell wide range of hose protection. We sell this spiral guard. Everybody goes nuts over every show, whether it's car wash, uh, ag, truck shows. People love this. Same thing with the nylon protective sleeving. Um, we sell O-ring kits, cap and plug kits. Uh, we do a lot of clamping solutions because guys don't realize if your hoses move too much, it puts too much stress on them and they wear out. So this is a weld on hose clamp. This is, happens to be a twin line hose clamp. You weld the bottom plate on and then you put the two plastic inserts and then the cap and then your hoses aren't going anywhere, which is I really good things. for routing. Yeah. We sell them in a wide range of sizes. This uh, comically I don't think large I need one. That one. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine where this goes. This one's probably more of an industrial setting. Discounthydraulichose.com. Give me a call, extension 205, I'll help you out. <laughs> and use coupon code TTWT. Get 5% discount. Oh yeah. Go ahead and call Blake. He's got your answers. Thanks for stopping, Tim. We do appreciate it. <laughs> and Ken, thanks for... All right, thank you, Blake. Yeah. Thanks for letting me stand in your booth. I love it, you know. We could always use an ugly face to my mom look good, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. We're here with Bill Reed in the Precision Manufacturing booth at the National Farm Machinery Show. And Bill, we got a brand new product here. I don't even have one yet. No, not yet. You will soon. Okay, you good. You will soon, so... Well, tell me about this. Okay, so... This is a part of our Big Mouth series of uh, grapples, and yes, Big Mouth. And this one's even bigger. This one will open up uh, 54 inches. Okay. Our our other models that we've had, we've got previously, our 320 and 322 models that you've shown on your uh, channel. Uh, they open up 48 inches. So. Which seems incredibly big for that it size is. grapple. It is. It is. And it's. To our knowledge, it's the um, it's the widest opening yeah, I in think that you're, class. I think you're right. So. I don't know of any wider. This one goes to 54. Now, it, it's it, this is meant for larger tractors. Yeah. So, so our other models, other big mo big mouth models, we um, we designed those for 40 horse and under. On this one, we've designed this for 40 to 70 horse tractors. So. And what we did, we made it, uh, still make it out of uh, AR400 steel, but we're using a 3 8 inch thick steel instead of the quarter inch that we use on the, uh, the other models. Yeah. And we've got this available in uh, two widths, a uh, 60 inch and a 72 inch width. And skid we, steer or Skid JD. steer or John Deere brackets. And and we still made it uh, lightweight, so for instance, just so I get this right here, the 60-inch uh, the John Deere is 438 pounds, the 72-inch is 486. The skid steer is a little bit heavier, it's at 478 pounds on the 60-inch and 526 on the 72-inch. Uh, so I think for your Deer three series or four series tractor. This is this is going to be right, and it's going to feel lightweight on a three series. Well, or four I was series. going to ask that. So I have a 3720, 43 horsepower. Why why would I choose this one over that one? Just out of curiosity. Well, the, this one is is definitely stronger with a three eighths inch material versus a quarter inch, and you've got a little bit wider. It's a little bit wider, right, right. and. Um, and a, uh, a bigger opening yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, okay. um, I mean, we haven't seen one of these bent up yet, right? But when you get on these larger tractors, they it may not be strong enough to handle. I actually think it'll probably handle a 40 horse, maybe even a little more fine. But I think when we get into the 60 horsepower tractor, you know, we, th that may just not be quite a well, quite enough that, for 60, sure. Yeah. yeah, we felt like there was a gap in in the lineup, right? I mean, this has still got. Two, two clamps, right? And, uh, and uh, to my knowledge, no one has a, a mid-tier grapple that's got two clamps and yet is still this lightweight, made out of AR. Uh, it's entirely possible someone else does have it. I mean, there's so many grapples out there, but 
this seems like uh, just the next step for, for what Precision is doing. And we incorporated uh, some of the same features that we have in the other big mouth. For instance, the uh, concealed cylinders. We've got a plate of steel here protecting the cylinders. Yeah. We put the hoses behind this rectangular tubing here for protection. I do love the way your cylinders are in the center of the clamp versus being out here on the edges where yeah. they're more vulnerable. Yeah, I know. I yeah, know. I do like yep. that design. Yep. Yeah. Now, with this one, even the skid steer version has the cylinders in the, the center. On the 322, we get small enough where the skid steer version has to have them on the outside. And so we see a little bit of flex uh, if you grab something just right. We don't see it bend permanently, but we see it flex when you clamp. Right. Uh, now the JD quick attach version of the 320, it, it indeed has a uh, middle mount cylinder. So it has that, that same feature. So right. we do it where we can and yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I got to get yeah, one, Bill. It's, it's, it really releases the uh, material inside of it easy too. And you'll see it closes up tight. Even a small load, it'll hold it tight. We reinforce each tine, rake tine. And the outside tines, we reinforce on the inside and outside. The gap here is about seven inches. A uh, quick measurement when it's fully closed. That is, that's tight. That is, that is very tight, And of yes. course, if you have a bigger load, it just clamps down on the load. So, you know, it's a, a very flexible on the load right, size right, in right. that sense. Yeah. You gonna get one, Ken? I, I would struggle. I, I really like that one for the lightweight, but I don't know. I like them both. I think your struggle is real because you're yeah. right on that horsepower cutoff. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're right at yeah. the 40 or slightly over horsepower, yeah. and, and this smaller not, one might I'm do not, the trick. I'm not a believer that the grapple has to be as wide as the tractor. That a lot of people think you need, like a bucket, you need the grapple to cover the tracks. I'm not convinced of that. I agree. No, Some people I'm not are. either. I'm not so, either. A lot of people are. You're I right. Should, I need it yeah. wide enough to be able to grab something and keep it from just right. flopping right. around. And a, a 60 inch is going to be that. Yeah. Even the even the 50 inch yeah, on I'm the. A, uh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with a decision. Yeah. I also love that, that you're using um, the higher quality cylinders instead of the tie rod cylinders. It right. just looks nicer. It looks cleaner. They're still resealable, they're still serviceable. We've got double stands on this one as well. Stands are actually built into this one? Yes. Yeah, I like that too. Yep. Agfolks.com, A-G-F-O-L-K-S.com. Use coupon code TTWT. If you have difficulty making this decision, leave a comment here or go to tractoruniverse.com. Tell us your, your situation, we'll try to help you. What better place to finish up our tour of the farm show than on this 12 foot Zero turn. Yeah, I'm just enjoying the seat. We've been walking and walking and walking. 44 horsepower on this unit, 12 foot cutting width. Christy, you could have our yard done in a jiffy with this. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. What do you think? It's huge. It is huge, but think about how much you could swing those wings around if you were mowing with yeah, a zero I'd turn. Yeah, knock every tree down and hit the house. <laughs> it would be nice though, it would be a lot faster. It would, it would. Even this if is... we just used it for the straightaways. Yeah, this is quite a mower. I bet it would actually trim pretty good, believe it or not. As long as you could get into it there. I'd have to learn more. <laughs>